Please, mate, you want to talk American? Hello, people. It's me, Dave Courtney. I'm home here at Camelot Castle. And I'm waiting for Michael Francis to come round. And we are auctioning his car today. Last time I was away for two months, I was in prison. <laughs> you didn't have to beat everybody up every night. No, I okay. didn't mind. Fight the mafia and what's happening here in uh, the United Kingdom kind of joining together, the real thing. You never answered the question, but it was good. <laughs> I was right. I was <laughs> there. It's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of bald heads there. That's a good crew you got. Man. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very yes. proud of them. Take care, buddy. Yeah. Mark was a little trick of mine, always stand in front of someone, it makes you look bigger. You yeah, like so small up. Stay in the car. Turn it off and stay in the car. Hello, people. It's me, Dave Courtney. I'm home here at Camelot Castle, and I'm waiting for Michael Francis to come round, and we are auctioning his car today. Right? This, let me tell you, is the 1972 Lincoln Continental. Look at the boot space in there. Right, there's enough for one or two bodies and all the equipment you need to put in there. But have a look at this car. This, this car could be yours for just 20 pound, yeah? 20 pound for a ticket, and it goes into the raffle. Yeah, have a look in there. That is a sexual car, right? A very sexy car indeed. Have a look at the front, and if you can tell me anything more sexual than that, that is pure f***ing gangster. Hold on, please, let me. Mwah. And if the microphone on that is working, start that one up, Maestro. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it just makes you want to talk American, you dirty bastard. I'm going to bug you. Right? That is yours for £20 a ticket. If you've got to be in it to win it. So buy a ticket. Fuck's sake, look at that. Buy a dream for a score. Right? <laughs> Beautiful, that's the one. You're right, you're all right. Well, this, two, this two could be yours with just £10 a ticket. Have a look at it. Yeah. A proper bit of English kit that's trying to be that. Right, this is a Rolls Royce something or other. Right, can't even put the doors on the right way, look. Right, a Rolls Royce saying or other, just £10 a ticket, this could be yours. Right, you get it with a chauffeur, lovely fella, cross-dresser. Oh, that'll be me. Very funny guy in a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> you can top in the towel. Yeah. Oh, what are you fucking freezing over there? Oh, there's going to be about... 
don't know how many come in. I think it might be around the bar. I don't know, it's exactly you, but... I'll be now since you need to do it. It's retired, so it's going to be... He's coming back too, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, but if I'm going to put a quick we might make a lucky. Yeah? If you have to want it. I'll bring her and see what she said. This is Reese. this is the man that um, <laughs> has organised uh, Michael coming over into the country and doing all this raffle and setting everything up. He took me to go and see the, um, he picked me up in this. Michael sent that car to come and pick me up to go and see his show in London. And... Um, How was the show? Oh, it's fantastic. It's cool. Everything that you think the man is about, when you talk to him, he's about. Yeah, you know, what you, he's a very much what you see is what you get. He looks like a naughty little... And he, he has been a very, very naughty little rich. So, you know, he's got an interesting story, and it was worth um, it was worth going there to see. Yeah. So, uh, so did see. he decide to come over and see you today, or was he? He's come, he, no, no. He decided he wanted to go. He, they, they're on, they're on a selling this trip. You know, yes. selling this little trip. And he met me up at his show and said, "Can I go over to Dave's house? He's over at the castle, which, which actually." Buzzed me that he'd even heard of it, you know what I mean? He introduced me as Mr. South London and, and all that shit, so I wanted to mind that he wants to come to my gaff and have his pictures took, you know what I mean? I nearly had a wank. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you play ball, do you think you're going to have a game, you think? I hope he does play ball, yeah, yeah, and I will try and whop the f with one hand. Respect <laughs> yeah, yeah. where respect's due, but it's my own ball table. Absolutely, with yeah. the Brits, you know, you've got to <laughs> with the Brits. <laughs> you've got to show that stuff. Just to come out and go back in. Hey, go on. Dave, do you want the mini gun? Well, I think he wants to get out, but he can take my kite and put the kite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a picture in front of you and me. <laughs> yeah, this is James. This is my voice speaking to the world. <laughs> Brendan, here we are. You've got um, Michael I'm Francis like, well, coming here today. Well, did, did you go to the uh, Grosvenor? I did go to the Grosvenor with him, yeah. Yeah, well, what was it like? Good? It was good. It was good. Him and old uh, Trevor yeah, McDonough. Really <laughs> he, he was really good. Yeah. I always preferred him when he done Tiz Was. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, he was good in that, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he does a wicked Tommy Cooper, apparently. He does, yeah. He's very good. New faces he was good on as well. Um, so, yeah, you're looking forward to seeing him again? I am, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a nice guy, Michael. He's very humble. Yes. Um, and a good speaker. Yeah. Has he converted you yet? Oh, uh, no, I think that's well beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen, that, is it's it? It's not no. going to happen, I'm afraid. No, <laughs> no, no. That's really Lovely good. guy. Thanks, Vid Toy. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been off to Ukraine? We've, we've done a couple yeah, of trips yeah, yeah. to Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're How back at. Are you, are you actually going Before, into Ukraine? Well, we, we just went to the Polish border, but the next time we're going on the 22nd of August, yeah. we're actually going into Lviv. Right. And uh, we're delivering humanitarian aid at to the Viv, so it's, it's too. Uh, I don't. Well, it's just like yeah. driving across Germany and Poland, and that. It's no danger in it really, unless oh, you fall asleep at the wheel. Really. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> Dave, do any of the driving? Um, oh no, no, Dave can't drive at the moment until yeah. he gets his license back. You know, right? Okay. But he's, he's like, um, he just keeps me awake telling me stories. Fantastic. And how are Charlton doing? Are you going to do this season? Uh, well, I'd rather not talk about that, to be honest. I, I'm trying to be optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, hey. Not bad. <laughs> Dave, all right? There's a nice, sharp-looking dude. <laughs> all right. All right. Nice good. 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 So good. Uh, yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, tell us about him because he's a. He's oh, listen, no, no, listen. He, 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 he's got an aura of his own. Mm -hmm. I'm more proud that he's here in my house 
than I am of anyone else. Yeah. Thank you, David. I mean, no, I mean that out of my tummy. Listen. Right? Out of my tummy, I've known him since I had a fringe. Yeah. Right? <laughs> many, many, many years. We, we, we haven't seen much of him of, of late still. So he's a globe trotter, isn't he, yeah. now? He's a globe trotter. He's all around the world. And that. International traveller. Right. Uh, International trouble, mate. But today, he, but today, he's in my yard. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to have him here. He yeah, was, it's he cool. Was, yeah, he's, uh, he's an original. Yeah. Right, and when they talk about South London's finest, mm -hmm. that is fucking one. Absolutely. Yeah, maximum. Yeah. He's a, yeah, he's a good... Well, I like to say, Dave, is and, that, you're, and you're funny. I don't know about funny, but, you know, I was a doorman, and when I heard about you as a gangster, I thought, you know, I've got to meet this man. And when you ended up in Plumston, and I was only at the top of the road, I thought, I've got to get down there and knock on the door. And every, every time I drove past, I thought, I can't knock on his door. <laughs> and when I finally did, Dave went, come in, come in, do you want to go in the pool? I said, fuck me, what's this? He goes, I played you one hand, did £100. I thought, what's going on? <laughs> I didn't who, want to meet him. Who won the game? Did he, did he win? Yeah, <laughs> he's very good, isn't he? He's very good. But it's great. You're looking forward to seeing uh, Michael Francis today. I am. I thought he was here. Someone said he's already here. Is no, he's he? He's not here yet. No, no he's, going, he's coming soon, so it's going to be good. Right, but... tell me a bit about him, Dad. I don't really know what he does or well, what he, he, he he's does. He's a mafia don. Yeah. Oh, right, what's he doing in England? What's he promoting today? He's on a tour. He's, he's on, on a, what, tour, a world doing, tour. Or... He's on a world tour doing talks and all that. Yeah. Right. All about life inside the mafia and all. Well, he's actually okay. doing to, what he's going to be doing today is, you see that that car of his? He's Over there. Be, he's selling that. But he's doing it on, as, as a raffle, and it's twenty pound a ticket. Right, well, so we're buying some of them. Yeah, he's going all around the country. I can imagine. Go, oh, yeah. please! I can imagine who's going to win it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't. You've been, <laughs> you think I have tried to actually get yeah. into it? Now, it. now we've got onto the raffling. Yeah. I was at a do of, of one of Charles Brodsons in Portsmouth, if I can remember, yeah. and Dave was auctioning auctioning some of his pictures. Yeah. So. Um, I'm there, so I thought 20, 40, 80, 60, Dave's gone, yep, yeah. 100, 150, 200, and I'm going, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. and Dave's going, you've been enough stilts, out, you've been enough, 300, 320, you've, stilts, oh, do you remember, his mum was there, and then uh, 350, I bought it, he come over and goes, what'd you do that for? I thought we were raising money for Charlie. He goes, I was trying to get you out of the bidding. <laughs> do you remember? You don't, don't you? Know. I do remember. <laughs> I was on your side. Yeah, I know. He tried to stop me from buying it. And I'm, all I was doing was trying to help Charlie. That's it. Well, it's great to have you here. It's fantastic. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, man. Yeah, it's uh, been fantastic. Yeah. Just having a look around at all the boys. Yeah, yeah. Lovely, Just having a look around at all the boys here. It's a yeah, bit old-timey, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's a bit of the same. Yeah. There we go. Everybody coming in? Still see? Always look, all looking this way. Stilks is hidden. Yeah, you got to see Stilks here. Here we go. That's it. I've got it. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, we're all there. Done. So, Dave, here you are. You're outside the Camelot uh, coming to see Michael Francis. Are you looking forward to this? I thought you'd come to see me. Yeah, <laughs> I think that is right. Yeah. Did you go to the, uh, was it the uh, big hotel there in London when he had his first No, no, I didn't. I was away for that. But, yeah, yeah that's why I'm here today. So. Yeah. So it's, it's quite interesting to, to meet someone like that. Have you, you haven't you not met him before? No, not yet. No. Not yet. So it's, it's interesting to meet someone from a different pond, should we call it. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, yeah. and how long have you known Dave? Legitimately, yeah. I, I haven't got the slightest idea, to be fair. <laughs> I think we met about an hour and a half ago. But yeah. I'm sure we'll get on quite well. Absolutely. That's it. And yeah. you're doing well yourself. Surviving. Yeah, are you going to uh, have a go at getting 20 quid for the car? I don't know. I reckon I'll bid him about 15. Yeah. We'll see how we go with it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be good. <laughs> there we go. Go on, Nick. Well done, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Nanny McLean, Joe Bowl, Tony Richardson, Ronnie Biggs, and John Gotti. Yeah. Let's go for the red Let's go to the back of the car. It'd be nice to put the flakes on. Yeah. I was just struggling to get past. Let's get on that. Let's get on that. Let's get You can come with them, you can come without them, you can come that, that, What I'm trying to say is, will you... I will supply them for you, yeah. That's what I was... Yeah. As, as I've got a bit older, the quality ain't as good. What about... <laughs> do, you supply, do you supply the party magic with it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I'm down there. I'm just showing... I'm leading the way. <laughs> Top man. I'm leading oh, the no. way. Are you comfy in that, you cheeky... Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> he does happen to be my chair. No, he can sit here for a minute. Uh. There's still people down there tied up. <laughs> oh, Good night, Kev. <laughs> Carol. Son of the Cali Cartel, William Rodriguez, Colombia. Oh, yeah. Three, two, one. Hello, people. I'm Dave Courtney, and I'm telling you to read this book, Son of the Cali Cartel, by William Rodriguez, right? This little firm run Colombia. So if you want to read something that's true, exciting, and sexy, this is the book, Son of the Cali Cartel. Read it. Well, I'll find out where you live and send the boys around. Right. I'm Brian Emmett. Hey, Gardner. Yeah, so uh, tell us why you're here today. Uh, yeah, support Dave. Come on, see you later. Come to have a look at uh, Lincoln Continental. Yeah, looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah looks really good. Yeah. And uh, are you going to meet the man himself, Michael Francis? Uh, we hope so. Yeah, if he turns up, yeah. Yeah, he's not here yet. Is no, he? no, it's a bit late. Yeah, you got anything you're going to ask him in particular? Not really. No. Nah. Uh, yeah, just here to support Dave. Just, really. Yeah, yeah. support Dave. Say hello. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Dave. Okay. All right. Good to see you. Thanks for having us. Where are we going, Dave? I'm just going to bring all this stuff in. Okay. Should we get seat? Oh, yeah. He's trying to drive the How you doing? Still working out, Mark. I see you. You're looking good. Yeah, try to stay in shape, Come right? Oh, Thank you. It's good. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Hi. All right. Oh, it looks good. <laughs> Hopefully, we both it's have it. Yeah, please, God. <laughs> Are you busy in here? It's yeah. a cool room, huh? You're busy in here. You're flying around in there. Yeah, you? yeah, doing a lot, but uh, it's all good. It's yeah, all good. We good. Got a, it's good. We got a good stretch coming up uh, next couple of days. So a few, I think three or four dates. So it's gonna be good. All good. You met my wife at uh, no, Grossman? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool room. Yeah, look in the next room. Is this my? Yeah. Have, yeah. have they been treating you well? The, the press has been great. Everything? Press has been great. Yeah. yeah. No problem at all. Yeah. We had a great time in Belfast. Yeah. But people have been just outstanding. Yeah. yeah. Really, wonderful. really, yeah, wonderful. The group, was it the growth that you did? Grosvenor was great, yeah. 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 It really went off well. They did a great job. People mm -hmm. enjoyed it. It was a late night. Yeah. So that's always good. People yeah. didn't leave. They didn't go. No, no, but it was good. They've all been good. Before it was going home. Actually, we're enjoying, you know, the last time I was away for two months, I was in prison. So, <laughs> never been away this long, but at least I got my wife with me this yeah, time. Yeah, that's good, that's good. But, um, no, it's been, it's been good. I mean, by the time we're going to, when we finish the tour, my two daughters are coming back on the 12th. And we finish the tour on the 14th. We're going to go 
One of them has never been to Paris. We're going to spend, oh, I think, two or three days in Paris. Then we're going to go to Capri for eight days yes. to oh, end this. Yeah. So we'll be home the end of August. <clears throat> the, oh, the, Joe Egan, yes, yes. yeah. He's a very you good know friend what? of mine. This all began with Joe Egan. Really? Yes. Uh, I, uh, we did a sit-down together. Yes. And just hit it off well. And then he introduced me to Cass. Yes. And that's how the whole oh, thing really? got that's started. The whole yeah. thing. He was uh, very, very pleasant, very delightful to speak with. And I, I watched your... Uh, your Mike Tyson interview where you mentioned it. Yes, I mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. Toughest white man on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But it was funny, Joe said to me, he said, Mike, I said, Joe, how does it feel to get hit by Mike Tyson? Yeah. Yeah. He said it was like an electric shock for his entire body. Yeah. 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 But he didn't go down. No, he I think he down. sparred him for two years. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mate, never went down. Yeah. Sean, I miss you, buddy. How come you're not here today? But we have three dates together, so get sharpened up, get ready, because uh, you're going to be on the spot for the next couple of days. I'm going to ask you some questions, too. But anyway, really looking forward to it. Um, and uh, just be ready, man. They've been going great, and I'm sure all three are going to be terrific. So can't wait to see you. Okay, have you ever seen anything like this? It's like a museum. Crazy. He's been here 35 years. You haven't seen anything in the back. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Did you meet during the, the film that you made? Was that, that what happened? You, you I met her on a film that I was producing in uh, Florida. <laughs> 30, almost 39 years ago. And what, what was the role you were playing? I was a dancer. Yeah. She was the dancer. She was the one, yes. 20 years old. Really? Still dancing? No. No, but not. Lots of other things. But all my daughters are dancers. Uh -huh. And uh, now they're all into fitness. Yes. Personal yeah. trainers. Right. How, how are you liking all of the YouTube stuff? Do you like it? Um, they got to twist my arm to do it. <laughs> and now she, my wife is filming everything since October. So yeah. now I don't have any escape at all. But. <laughs> But, you know, the good thing is it just blew up. I mean, yeah. it's been so successful. Huge, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we'll, we'll reach a million subs. That's great. And we've already passed a half a billion views on that channel. So we got to keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. I have one personal question I want to ask you. Was the Iceman, was he was he the, the all he was meant to be? No. No. You know, they, uh, they embellish a lot. Mm -hmm. But... He was never, the way he was depicted in the movie, yeah. Roy DeMeo did not uh, use him like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Not. Absolutely. Not. I, I, watched, I watched the tapes that he did from prison. They're very interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, interesting guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Actually, 20 yeah. years <laughs> No, but uh, he wasn't involved with us. Like no. I just got the money. Here we go. I just got the money.
you so much. Uh, Earlier your life, you didn't want to get photographed, really, did you? Yeah, I got you in a lot of trouble. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With me, it was inescapable because of my dad. Yes, he was dad was big, wasn't he? The, the minute I got involved, I was in trouble. Yeah, I did. It started with me. When I had my first arrest, I was 20. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I went to trial four times before I was 21. That's tough. Yeah. Okay, really is. We beat them all. And one with a flash, okay? Fantastic. Shea Stadium, 1964. Yeah. You know what the problem was? We had great seats. My dad had got me. But even right up front, we could not hear it. Because all they have is back line, basically. Yes. No, no, no nothing. Yeah, it was terrible. And you the screaming was just, yeah. the screaming just, you, you could not hear them sing. Yeah. We were close enough to see them, you know, but you could, and they had some people running on it. It was a great experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just couldn't yeah. hear it. Yeah. You haven't touched on Fox Magic's. It's a big amount of fun. Fun in fact, a uh, friend of mine right? is uh, okay. the road manager for the Rolling Stones. Okay, yeah. So he said, Marty just out now. Yeah. So when we were in London on July 2nd, he said, Michael, on the 3rd, I got your seats to see the Stones. Mm -hmm. It's not a Beatles fan. I don't want to see the Stones. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> one or the other. That's the uh, deal. Yeah. That's it was one or the other back then. Back to yeah. So now we're going to take five. Fantastic. All right, Liam. Um, doing good. Thank you. Still, still see yeah. the... Uh, All right. Uh, Okay. The world's hardest doorman. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. No. I, 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 the world's what? Hardest. No. Toughest. No. Toughest Listen, doorman. I've done it was before I was a doorman. For 32 yeah. years, six nights a week, sometimes I two or three clubs a night. I met everybody and looked after one everybody, one but I'm not the hardest. I'm just guiding. No, no, all right. So let me tell you a story. I had a couple of clubs that I was involved in, and here's what I used to tell my bouncers. Mm -hmm. That's I what said, I was. Not okay. a good one. And you were a good one because yeah. you kept everything under control. Yes. You didn't have to beat everybody up every night. No, but I okay. didn't mind. All right. Okay. <laughs> I used to tell my bouncers, you're big, you're strong, look what you look like. If you got to beat people up every night, I may as well get somebody small. What do I need you for? Yeah. You know, and they keep things calm. I'm sure you did. We've so ruined a lot of clubs. We <laughs> <laughs> shut them down. Well, <laughs> but listen, I, but that's I, another I, story. I, about yeah, that. I I yeah, my my sure <laughs> yes. Right, well, you're sorry. I can see you still train. I, sh I try to stay in shape. Yeah. 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 It's harder as we get older. That's it. Yeah, you, you, yeah. I, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to tell you, after, well, I've been doing it a little bit more lately. While I'm here, I got in like three times a week. I've been able to do it. But at home, you do it twice and then you feel it like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Well, how, how old are you? Am I like 64. Nearly okay. 65. But go on. I'm 71. So. <laughs> So you feel it, let me tell you, but uh, hey, it's it's better than not doing it. Yes, I would, sure. I would ask you a question though. Sure. But I used to be a three plate bencher for reps. Not uh, many, Right. but now I struggle with two plates for half a dozen reps. What about yourself? Uh, I'm around the same. You're about the yeah, same? Yeah, around the same. We'll have yeah. to do a workout. But it's a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a struggle. It's yeah, yeah, but you have to go. I hate training now, but I've trained but all my life. Do it. I've, I've had two gyms, but I have to do it. It's a part of my life. Yes. You know, the wife goes, where you going? Going training. Do you have to love? I have to. I have to go. Well, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that way because my wife is into it all. She's been into fitness nice. her whole life. And, and we have three daughters. They're all fitness. I call yeah. them fitness freaks. Franzi's fitness freaks. But, but obviously who's you've showed them the way. Yeah. Well, my wife actually did. Yeah. I mean, I always stayed in shape my whole life. You know, I never yeah. got, you know, out of shape. But... Um, I have no choice in my house, but it's good because you got you, you need to do it with partners and your name. I'm sorry Stilks S-T-I-L-K-S S-T-I-L-K-S Yep, what was the book you were in Stilks? What, Hard Bastards? Yeah, that's it. <coughs> many books, many books, but that ain't the, that ain't the one. I'm going to ask you one more question. I want to, I want to see if you answer it. Well, do, you still, do you still take a bit of test? Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I got fortunate. My dad passed away at 103. And he always tried to see that. Always tried. He, he did 40 years in prison. He was released at 100 years old. He was the oldest inmate in America when he, when he was released. But at 103, he looked like he was about 80. Well done. Yeah, so we have some good genes in the family. You never answered the question, but it was good. Oh, that was right. Let's do the photo. Let's do the photo. I'm sorry. George. George. Did you take. Uh, he's, he's, going he's going to do it in a second. Yeah, he's oh, going to do it. I've got you on here. Oh, oh, you oh is that filming? Yeah, I'm oh, filming. I filmed the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you get in the middle. You're, you're the man. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, we'll do that. But this, this is the one to look at. Okay. One more.
Michael, this is a little trick of mine. Always stand in front of someone, it makes you look bigger and the other fella <laughs> <player> smaller. <laughs> right. Well, you're well protected there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good. Oh, thank you very much. Well. Yeah, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Me. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming to our country. Thank you. And you continue to stay in shape, my man. Yeah, yeah. and you. <laughs> yeah. I said who come in and who never. Oh, which one we're looking at? Sorry, I was looking yeah, at yeah, yeah, this, this, this one in the middle. This is the one. <laughs> That's on video. And then, and then still to. Is it filming? Well, it's supposed to be. Are you pushing the button all the time? <laughs> oh, what am I pushing the button for? <laughs> well, you're you stopping it and then starting it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm starting. He was good as a dual one, but. Yeah, 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 photography. Yeah, I was good no. at. No photography. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah? Is it going? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, lovely. Cheers. Thank you. It was video? Uh, it was, yeah. I thought I could... Thank see, you. just a screenshot. Yeah, you could picture, trust yeah. me. Better picture. I don't trust him, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. All right, fellas. Thank you. Thank cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. One more? Just yeah, one more. Can go on this side. Good side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm not laughs> sure. no, that's all right. Want to sit? Yeah. So. Alright, um, Nathan. Okay. Three, two, one. And again. Three. Let me get the flash, guys. I'm into dark. <laughs> no, you, you look good. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 Three, two, one. And again. Fantastic, thank you very much. And finally, Max, if you could do one of me and Mike. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Very nice. This is good. Did you ever feel that there was another road for you, or was it was it you were always going to head that way? No. When I was younger, I mean, before my dad got in all this trouble, I was a college student. Mm -hmm. you know, I was going to be a doctor. So it was a far different path. Mm -hmm. But you know, honestly. My dad wanted me to be a, a doctor professionally, yeah. so you're going to be the first one in a, in a family that's yeah. going to have a profession. Yes. So he really wanted that for me early on, mm -hmm. but it uh, wasn't meant to be. No. It was, it was always going to go that way, was it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he was so high profile, and, you know, mm. you get a 50-year prison sentence. Yeah. How are you going to go to school and forget your father? you got to help him, right? Absolutely. So that was my thing. And, you know, we thought uh, we had a better shot at helping him being on the street. Mm. Is, is there ever a point that you think you'd like to, you think, oh, I'd, I'd like to do something in my old life again, or are you happy that it's all gone? You know, listen, I, I have fond memories of, mm. of a lot of time in that life, mm. you know, especially the, uh, you know, the relationship with the guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a lot of good times. Yeah, but... There was always a lot of stuff going on around mm -hmm. us, but we had a lot of good times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I miss that. I'd be lying. Hey, listen. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had my own jet plane, I had a helicopter, mm -hmm. I had houses in three states, I uh, had a couple of hundred guys under me that we were yeah. doing a lot of stuff with, so, you know, there was a lot of good times involved yeah. with that. And then we had, our whole families were always together, you know, so it was great. Did but, you, do you want, uh, ever think your past may catch up with you? Do you ever have that worry? If it hadn't by now, <laughs> like I said, I'm 71. If it hasn't by now, I think you're probably all right. Yeah, aren't you? I think yeah. we beat the odds, and uh, yeah. you know, at least till this. You know, look, when you get into your 70s, everything is a bonus from this point. So, yeah, oh, many years to come. How often you go on to your uh, podcast? Um, oh, I've done a. I do about one a month somewhere. One a month, somewhere. A month up yeah. down the country somewhere. Oh. I've, I've purposely cut down how many I do because you can do too many, can't you? You can, no, you can, you can, you can prostitute yourself that much that it become less interesting. So I now pick and choose more. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, I have a team that drives me crazy. We do two a week, but uh, for the last two years, but yeah, yeah, and yeah. Well, I, we're, we're all over the, all over the world. Yeah, well, you know, I interview a lot of people. England's and a very little stories. place, you know. Yeah. Man, I, don't, I don't do my own podcast. I go on everyone else's. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much. Honour to have you in the answer. And, and a pleasure uh, to meet you, Dave. And, yeah, and you've met the whole Dave Courtney firm on we some blog. We <laughs> certainly have. It's, yeah, uh, it's, a lot of bald heads there. 
That's a good crew you got. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very yes. proud of them. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Essex one. It's going to be fun, and uh, it's on August 13th at the Players' Lounge in Billericay. And uh, all you former gangsters are invited. Just behave yourself that night. Law enforcement, don't come. I'm only <laughs> kidding. Uh, it's going to be a good night for everyone. And uh, really looking forward. All the dates have been great so far, Dave. People have been wonderful. I've been here now six weeks and uh, just really enjoying well, The undercurrent about your shows, the undercurrent around the real people, is they're buzzing with it. Yeah, it's working for you, whatever you're doing and saying, they are loving, lapping it up, and it's working for you, you know what I mean? That's why I'm, I'm honoured you're here and honoured to be a part of it, because they're all um, uh, hip hip array and your realism, yeah? yeah? It's beautiful, well. it's, it's beautiful to hear, because what you will get at these shows is more would-be gangsters, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, it, and they, they've also got to learn from someone that's real. And you're real, sir. Well, it's been exciting. And like I said, people yeah. have been wonderful. And uh, you and I have a mutual acquaintance, I don't know if you know that, and Patrick Bed David. Yeah, of yeah. course. You've done his uh, his podcast, yeah. and Patrick and I go back to uh, Yeah, he's years. a nice guy. He's a good guy. He's nice the best guy. one I've done. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. He's the best and, one I've uh, done. I saw it back then. You know, when I met you after, I said, man, I know David. I saw him before, and then I realized it was on Patrick's show. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. And, and Joe Egan, Dave. Joe Egan. Joe Egan, yeah, Joe he's Egan. a good friend of mine too. Yeah. Well, you know, Joe Egan is how I actually got here because yeah. I, uh, I had to sit down with Joe Egan and uh, we talked about Tyson and all of that. And then he said, you know, Mike, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine by the name of Cass Evans. He yeah. wants to bring you on tour here. One of the best so promoters Joe, in the country, yeah. Yeah, Joe uh, put it all together. I haven't How's met Joe cool? yet now. We've only talked many times. And I've seen cool him on guy? YouTube. But, uh, he's, cool. he's, a big, he's a big unit. That's what I hear. <laughs> I hear he's like this wild. Now, anyone who wants to fight Mike Tyson five days a week for five years. Exactly. He's a tasty man. And I'm you know what he told man. me? I said, because, you know, Mike says he's the toughest white guy he ever he's met. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I said, uh, Joe, how was it to get hit by Mike? And he, he said, Michael, it was an, like, an electric shock went through my body. He said, I, I can't describe the way I He's felt. He's a beautiful talker. But he didn't go down. Yeah, he yeah. didn't go down. That's so. why Mike had him. Yeah. That's why, you know, he's banging out sparring partners. Yeah. And he wouldn't go down. Three or four a day, yeah. So it's all cool. Do the two yeah. of you have any regrets at all of your lifestyle? Uh, you have to have regrets, you know, you, you, as, as you mature. Yeah, as you mature, you have to have some things you go, I shouldn't really have done that. But at the time, you haven't known. Later on in life, I think with maturity, you might have some regrets. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, yeah. when you think back, you know, um, you know, we we obviously were involved in some rough situations and, uh, and you have those regrets. But again, when you're doing it, it's part of the business, part of the life. But as you mature, get older, get wiser, you know, get... You're not, you're not going home relishing on the fact of what you just done. You're also not going out, going away from the situation, regretting what you just done. It's work. Yeah, it's just work. As you get older and you reminisce, then you might go, mm, that was a bit naughty. Mm. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Was, was there a buzz to it, though, the whole thing? Being successful, I'm, af I'm afraid there's a little buzz to it. Being successful in any field, in any walk of life you're at, while it's all working for you, that in itself is a buzz. Yeah? I agree. I think while it's all... I agree. And, if you, and, and because, because it's on a daily, a daily routine of what you're doing, you don't have time to reflect on what you've done yesterday because it's happening again today and sure. tomorrow's happening again and tomorrow. So you don't ever have time to sit back and reflect on what you've done. So yes, there is a buzz to it. The way of life, the the perks of what you're doing as a job, you know, you have to grab them with both hands because on the days you do it wrong in our world, you pay very dearly for it with years. And so you, you enjoy the good times. You work hard to get to that point, you yeah. know, to even become what we become. And um, when you succeed, there is a high to it, you know, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, the night I got made, it was very exhilarating for me. Uh, but again, you know, then you look back and you say, okay, a few of those things, maybe I do regret them. But uh, hey, listen, you know, as a person of faith, and you know, I consider myself that at this point in time, we always realize we can't go back and change the things that we've done. We can only do better in the future and maybe have those regrets and not ever repeat them again. And that's how we move forward.
And, and do you have any advice to people watching this who might be considering going down that road? Huh. For me, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years, you know, speaking to a lot of young people. I've done it here with uh, Gloves Up, Knives Down, a great organization that we're supporting. You know, and we tell these kids, it's a dead-end street, no doubt about it. You you take that road, you're going to end up in prison, or God forbid, something worse. And, uh, you know, that's the only end in sight. That's how it is in the States. I'm assuming it's the same way it's here. It's pretty much the same way. Listen, yeah. it's the wrong era to do what we've done. Yeah, you're not competing against a Sherlock Holmes policeman no more. You're trying to exactly. beat technology. Yeah, and you cannot beat technology. Right? That will put you in prison. So today is not the time to go down the gangster route. Yeah, The word gangster is a very um, theatrical, old-fashioned word, like knights in shining armour, pirates, cowboys, gangsters. They're a, um, an infamous naughty men of the past, and there isn't no more. There's just prisoners. So crime is the wrong route for anyone today. And that's from people here that know what they're talking about. Yeah, they no, know what we're talking about. I couldn't have said it any better. Dave said it right. You're not, uh, you're not fighting law enforcement like you did at one point in time. It's all about technology. They've got all the weapons. They've got all the laws in their favor. And it's a dead end street. It's like banging your head against the wall. It doesn't pay. So uh, I know you don't have a, a lot of time here, so uh, just tell us uh, how much more of the tour have you got to do and people can still get tickets and everything, can't they, for the tour? We have, uh, I think, seven more dates, you know, with the finale coming in Essex and then Milton Keynes. Uh, very excited because Dave will be with me in Essex for sure. Uh, we're going to have a great time. It's been a wonderful experience for me just being here for the past six or seven weeks, meeting everybody and seeing how well people have uh, really taken to every event. So we're excited about it. Um, you know, going to look forward to finishing it up and, uh, and moving on. But uh, Dave, what do you think? Yeah, listen, everyone's going to be, everyone's it's actually buzzing about you showing Essex. Essex is a notoriously flash but naughty boy area, ain't it? Right? And, and there's an opportunity that you mustn't miss here. What he's talking about them, that car outside, the sexiest car in the world. <laughs> yeah, it could be yours for £20. Right, 20 quid is for a ticket. Don't let that one slip through your hands. You've got to be in it to win it. So for 20 quid, you could drive away in an actual real dream. Right? It is sexual. Getting in it makes you want to talk like him. You dirty rat. Yeah, you can't help it. You can't help it. So don't waste the opportunity. 20 quid and drive home in that. And that was the car of choice. I never thought I'd see one over here in the United Kingdom in England, but that was the car of choice of all the big guys back then. 1972 Lincoln Mark IV. Uh, you got to go for it. I They've sat said, in it and wanted to come out of retirement. <laughs> I just sat in it and wanted to come out of retirement. You know what? That's why I yeah. won't sit in it. I'm afraid I want to go back. But anyway, <laughs> nice it's been you. great. Dave, nice thank you. you, man. All right, my man. Thank, thank you. you very much. Very nice. That was great. Very nice. I can't believe I had to come all the way to the United Kingdom to see a Lincoln Mark IV. Haven't seen one of these in years, but it was our preferred car. I had a Mark III, a Mark IV, a Mark V, you name it. We always preferred Lincolns over Cadillacs, you know, back in the day. Let me tell you why. Much smoother and softer ride. So when we had special package in the trunk, you know, we didn't want it to rattle around too much. So this was great. Nice soft ride, but great car. And listen, it's your chance to own one. Now, had again come all the way to the United Kingdom to see one of these. Your chance to own one. Here it is. All the details are there. Get your tickets now. They're going fast, but you get a chance to own this car. And I'm going to be driving in a little bit too. Now you don't get me with the car, but you do get the car. So get your tickets right now. Going fast. All right, I want to see everybody in Essex. That's a big show coming up. It's almost our finale. It's on uh, August 13th at the Players' Lounge in Billericay. And uh, all you former gangsters, you're all welcome. If you're a real gangster, you can come too, but you got to play it right that night. No disturbances, everything's got to be cool. But this is my new crew. We're all going to be there. You're never going to get a chance to see this again. I'll be live on stage. Me and my buddy Dave here. It's kind of like the mafia and what's happening here in uh, the United Kingdom kind of joining together, the real thing. So uh, get your tickets now. They're going fast. I guarantee they won't last. Again, August 13th, Players' Lounge in Billericay. That's an offer you shouldn't refuse.
I hope you're enjoying the podcast. I've got some exciting news to announce. Michael Francis is coming back to tour the UK in 2024. The remade Mantor, the Michael Francis story. Michael Francis, once named one of the 50 most significant mob bosses in the USA by Fortune magazine, and a former member of the notorious Colombo crime family, will take you deep into the world of organized crime, sharing captivating tales and insights into the Mafia's past, present, and future. Join us for an unforgettable evening with Michael Francis, the original Goodfella, as he exclusively sits down with myself, Sean Atwood. With me as the host, there's going to be a no-holes-barred exploration of Michael Francis's life, including his numerous arrests and jury trials that ultimately led to his pleading guilty to a federal racketeering charge, a 10-year prison sentence, and $15 million in restitution. You will have the unique opportunity to ask questions during an audience Q&A session, making this event a must-see for true crime enthusiasts and anyone curious about the underworld. Don't miss this explosive In Conversation with Michael Francis. Live on stage in the UK, this exclusive in-person event will be held in various locations in the UK, Ireland and Scotland. Link in the description box below this video if you want to grab yourself a ticket.